Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The issue of sedition and seditious acts and what actually constitutes sedition is back in focus. Last time we were discussing this issue was when JNU students Kanaya Kumar and others were charged with sedition. The latest instance happened in Bangalore last, week, last weekend where Amnesty International India had organized an event on the violation of human rights experienced by families from Jammu and Kashmir. The event apparently saw some heated exchanges on the issue of role of army in human rights violations and slogans for pro-Kashmir independence were apparently raised. Like in the JNU case, the ABVP complained to the police claiming that anti-India slogans were raised. The Bangalore police have filed a FIR against the Amnesty International India, charging it under Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code, which defines sedition, among other violations. Many questions have been raised again about the use or misuse of Section 124A of the IPC. Also, what constitutes an act of sedition and whether in the last several years successive governments have been using this law for the right purposes. And also whether what happened in Bangalore constitutes an act of sedition and also whether any safeguards need to be built in to ensure it's not misused or abused. We will discuss all this today with Ved Marwa, former governor as well as former commissioner of police Delhi, Justice B.A. Khan, former chief justice of Jammu and Kashmir High Court, Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate Supreme Court, Ashok Tendon, senior journalist, and on the phone line from Bangalore is Shailesh Rai, Director Law and Policy at the Amnesty International India. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Shailesh Rai, coming to you first, you know how the charges against your, uh, you know, against Amnesty is that it is indulged in an act of sedition. How do you, how, how, are you, how do you defend yourself? Well, I think uh, there are two elements to this question. Um, one is the basis of the allegations that are actually mentioned in the complaint, which uh, we believe are completely unsubstantiated. Um, the complaint by the BVP says that Amnesty International India staff actually raised the national slogan, uh, sang anti-national songs against the army, and uh, all of this is basically untrue and uh, should be borne out by the footage of the event. One second. Mr. Mr. Rai, Mr. Rai, sorry, there, there seems to be a problem with the audio there. Uh, are you saying that the allegations made, made, made are all untrue? Yes, indeed they are. I think because especially the allegations which are made against Amnesty International India, because uh, that is the, the first party mentioned in the complaint, um, are untrue because none of our employees actually sang any anti-national songs or sang any songs for that matter um, or delivered any speeches against the nation or shouted any slogans. Um, the second issue, I think, is, uh, you know, around the shouting of the slogans themselves. Now, you know, we have shared the footage of the event with the Bangalore police and they will, of course, uh, carry out an investigation. But I think, uh, you know, much of the the anger around the issue seems to stem from the fact that uh, slogans of Azadi were raised. And now the question is that even, even if there were slogans, let us just assume that there were slogans of Azadi which were raised by people who were at the event, does that constitute sedition? And um, I think, you know, um, the Supreme Court um, has quite clearly laid out the case for what actually, when actually um, ex expression amounts to sedition. And it has made it clear that there is an element of um, a tendency to uh, uh, imminent violence, which is an important element of the crime itself. And where that tendency is absent and where there is no uh, threat of imminent violence, then speech cannot amount to sedition. And there have been several okay. cases Mr. Sh shown. Shailesh, are you, are, you, are you so admitting that Azadi slogans were indeed raised during the, uh, during the event? Not at all. I think, you know, we did, we did hear some slogans, but we can't, of course... Um, be sure of what exactly they were, uh, the, the content of, the exact content of the slogans, and that is something that the police will look into. But I'm saying that even a, a lot of the, um, uh, what I'm saying is that Amnesty International India staff did not definitely raise those slogans. So the FIR itself is against Amnesty is unsubstantiated. The, FI, the FIR is only against the Amnesty International? Yes, the yes, FIR is against Amnesty India and against unknown persons, but Amnesty India as an organization is listed as the first. Okay. Oh, okay. Please stay on. I'll come back to you. Justice Khan, how do you look at this? You know, we'll come to the larger issue of what sedition. We have discussed this in the past and we need to discuss it again. 
But as far as what has happened in Bangalore, how do you look at that? Uh, well, Girish, I don't know. This might be one, one more instance of um, this provision of law which is otherwise being uh, misused a lot. Uh, this may be one more misuse. But uh, for the present, since uh, after the case has been registered, it's a matter of investigation. Registered against an organization. Organization. And, uh, is, it, is it usual to... To, to uh, you know register cases against an organization in such matters. That, that takes us to a very uh, important issue. You see, there's a very gray area between the letter of the law and the implementation. And uh, whether an organization should be booked or should not be booked uh, is for whom to decide, is for the investigating agency to decide. And unfortunately, in such cases, for example, in a case of 124A, this is a provision of law which is not very well understood either by the investigating agency or even by our subordinate judiciary. So there is a huge gap in this. And what they usually do, uh, Mr. Veer Marma might be able to tell you more about it, they in a routine manner, they you, you know enter a section of the uh, IPC and say that this offense is uh, made or labeled out. Now, with this uh, non-understanding and with this lack of investigative either skill or equipment, there is bound to be a misuse of the provision of law. And in this case, a misuse is so rampant that always it leads to some kind of a politicalization of the offense. And even as you know, even Gandhiji had said this, is, this provision is the prince among the uh, offenses, political offenses. Uh, which uh, the British uh, used yes uh, yeah, <laughs> to to uh, to suppress or to oppress estheism. Uh, but be that it, it, it may, there is a case. See, this has been uh, declared to be constitutional by the Supreme Court in Kedarnath Singh's case, and uh, there is a strong feeling that see, in a constitutional democracy, you can't be having uh, a thing like this. Which where your fundamental right of freedom of expression uh, uh, is, curtailed. Is, is curtailed, it's rendered, it's mortgaged. It's mortgaged to this kind of a provision of law and which provision is being used for different uh, purposes other than the purpose it is. See, in our democracy today, I don't think there is a requirement of this law can ever be satisfied. For example, there can't be an, a, 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 an overthrow of a uh, government established by the government by, by law, there can't be an incitement or incitement to violence. You don't see you raise speeches, you make speeches, you raise slogans, but does that amount to actual incitement? Incitement to violence. Violence. That is that is the Kedarnath. Uh, 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 that was the Kedarnath That's the Kedarnath. But that's a restrictive, very restrictive interpretation. The issue which must be discussed is <coughs> whether this restrictive interpretation given by the Supreme Court of this provision still results in some kind of a safeguard in exercise of a fundamental Exactly. Right. Safeguard, we will come to the, uh -huh. the safeguard aspect. Mr. Marwa, Mr. Marwa, you know, why do police act in the manner in which they act? When, when it comes to this kind of case, we have seen in the past also, you know, the past several years we have seen, a private complainant goes to the police station and says that in this case also it's a private complainant. It is not the police which, uh, you know, the ABVP, an organization, goes to the police station and says that some slogans have been raised. The police, are the police duty-bound to file an FIR you know, using Section 124A? You know, there are two sides. One is the, um, the legal side and the other is the practical side. From the legal side, there is no violation of the law if the police registers uh, a, a, a case uh, because it's only an FIR. It's only during investigation it will be established whether a particular offense is made out or not made out. But I think there is another issue of the practice uh, uh, followed by the investigating agencies. As a routine, and this is not only in case of sedition, Mm -hmm. As a routine, even if there is a writing case, for example, if you look at the FIR, 
they'll put every section <laughs> on the IPC on, on, on that. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, in this case, uh, let me tell you, hmm. section apart from 124A, uh -huh. section 142, there 143, 147, uh -huh. 149, all related to unlawful assembly is, and uh, rioting, uh -huh. and section 153A, promoting enmity between groups. Routinely, this, they are just. Uh, this, is, this is the practice. This is a long-standing hmm. practice from the. From the British days. From the British days and mm. even otherwise. They play safe. Mm. <coughs> you see, police is always on the defensive. And this, uh, uh, they don't apply their um, mind. <laughs> mind and uh, um, register, register the case. And uh, then hope for the best during investigation officer. And when the charge sheet comes, you will see there are very few um, uh, provisions are left. Now, th there is a case for the supervisory officers to ensure that this practice uh, is stopped for them. No, but my question, my question is, is the, is the police duty bound to file a case when a private complaint is filed against, filed? Tomorrow I go and file a complaint that I heard Mr. Marwa shouting anti-India slogans or whatever. Is this police bound to, you know, file a case? No, file not a case at all. I? Not at all. The police, if, if a report from a private citizen, and they're all private citizens who come to the police for a report. They can no, unless police police themselves were there and they, they witnessed no, the event. Most of these complaints are they can record it in the daily diary. There are two type of offences. One is a cognizable and one is a non cognizable. Non -cognizable. Only in the case of cognizable, uh, the FIR is uh, registered. These are cognizable Otherwise, offences. It's just a daily diary entry, and that's what the police needs to do. Sanjay, no, that discretion has gone after the Supreme Court judgment in Lalita Kumari's case. Ah, this, is, this, this is what was being discussed. Why, when, why did that discretion go away? The Supreme so, Court said so that... It, no, one, so, sorry. So does it mean that the police have no discretion if a private complainant comes and says that... So I heard so-and-so saying, uh, you know, raising these slogans. Section 124A needs to be used and See, a FIR filed. The police have no discretion in recording the facts of the case. In recording a, facts of the case. A, in, re, in recording as far as whenever there is a complaint uh, before them, they have to now register an FIR in the case of co a, any cognizable offence being, being uh, made out. The question, as Mr. Marwa said, was what sections to invoke. Right. Maybe, in, you see, previously the police had a certain discretion, therefore, uh, to avoid all charges of favouritism, they used to write all those sections down. Maybe it is now time to simply write down the bare bones of the complaint and say that the police is investigating. Thereafter, what sections to be invoked should probably come at a later stage of finally filing the charge sheet. The, uh, here what has happened is that the ABVP came in, the policeman had no discretion, he has registered a case. No, he will investigate. But, 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 he, but, but, just one minute. Did, just did, he have a, did he not have the discretion which sections he has to invoke. Yeah, yeah, he certainly ha uh, has a discretion there. He, he need not have recorded any section. All that he needed to do was to record the complaint. No, problem is of understanding, Girish. Question is, at that stage, who is dealing with this complaint? It's an ordinary police wala, maybe up to a Hwaldar or a Munshi. He doesn't have the understanding of the provision of law. How does he distinguish between, for example, um, advocacy and incitement? How does he distinguish whether it's an actual incitement or whether it's a mere slogan? And how does he say that a mere slogan doesn't uh, constitute sedition and so on? So what I'm saying is that there is a lack of understanding of the provision of law with our investigating agency, which is a... Which is a uh, ailment, otherwise afflicting or investigating. But it's a serious problem, you know, it leads to serious problems. <clears throat> Ashok Tendon, so, you know, they, they see, do you see a pattern in these kind of things? That, you know, the way these, 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 issue, these kind of issues are handled. Or have we become oversensitive to issues which, which you know, where, which requires this, you know, where, where the government or the police have to act in a more, more uh, restrictive manner? See, before I come to your point, <clears throat> I would like to mention... What happened in Bangalore also, you can yeah. mention. When the incident took place in January, this issue was raised again, yes. as you have also rightly said. And when the debate took place in the Rajya Sabha, the Home Minister very clearly said that... And, and the consensus in the House was, it's a relic, it must be 
uh, at least uh, given a relook. And then if the, not a burial. He, <laughs> the Home <laughs> Minister promised the House that this matter has been referred to the Law Commission. And as soon as the Law Commission report comes to the government, we will convene an all-party meeting and then we will certainly discuss it. Now, even the new Law Commission chairman has also wondered why this act has not been given a relook in the last so many years since independence. And in fact, this was the terms of reference of the 20th Law Commission yes. also, and which has not given any report. So therefore, the matter is now before the Law Commission. And I think the consensus in the country is that this law needs to be given a relook. Now, coming back to your point on the Bangalore, I think... Uh, uh, there is something more than what my other colleagues have said about registering the case. See, there is some politics uh, in Karnataka taking place. The fact remains, and if you look at the statement given by the state home minister and the chief minister, that we will look into the evidence and the tapes and then take a decision. But I don't agree with my colleagues that the police officer on the spot can register a case of 124A unless he or she has the backing of the political establishment. Problem, political problem. And if I believe the report which was circulated in the media was that at one of the meetings recently at the Congress High Command, there was a move to remove him. And he threatened that don't forget that I have doors open for the BJP as well. Now, therefore, is this case of sedition under 124A has been registered? And that too on the complaint of ABVP which is a basically an affiliate of the BJP RSS. A Congress regime in Karnataka, the Bangalore police, which is under the Congress regime, registering a case on the complaint of ABVP, there's something seems to be Sanjay, political in it. Sanjay, and therefore... Sanjay, would you like to react to this? Well, I don't speak for the Karnataka. No, you don't. I, I, I'm, I'm, but, you, you, <laughs> but the thing is... The other you, uh, Since you're from Karnataka, yes, I'm asking no, you. The, the other thing is that elections are due in Karnataka That's next year. So consequently, no, another, another two years now. Uh, two no, years uh, more. So, so consequently, no side can be seen as being anything less than totally nationalist. <laughs> they, so, so, so uh, uh, there always, whenever there is a sedition charge, there's always a lot of politics behind it. You must remember that even in Delhi, sedition charges were invoked after the uh, Sikh riots against several journalists. If you sp uh, uh, during the Anna agitation. An innocuous cartoonist got into trouble in Absolutely. Maharashtra. Right. Behind every sedition case is a government which says, I don't like your politics and you are shouting too loud. No, okay. Here, 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 some, see, on, on this very issue, the Congress spokesperson in Delhi has criticized the... Exactly. There seems to be a problem. People. There seems to be a difference of opinion between what the leaders in Delhi are saying and what the leaders in Karnataka exactly. are saying. Exactly. That's... Uh, Mr. Shailesh, Shailesh, uh, so from what we are what we are discussing here, does it? Do you feel that you have become a victim of some political battles going on there? Well, I'm not going to uh, conjecture, you know, whether we are victims of a political battle, but I think it it is it is it seems rather convenient that you know um, uh, the debate on Kashmir and the kind of violence that was happening in Kashmir, which was very active until just last week has now uh, made way for this debate on sedition and Karnataka and what is happening in Karnataka while the violence continues in Kashmir. I mean, uh, Mehbooba Mufti on, in her Independence Day speech actually said that dialogue is the only way to actually go forward. But uh, an event which is held with the purpose of actually having that sort of dialogue is now branded as seditious. And um, this, this, uh, the, the, the event actually came on the back of a report which we had released last year on, um, you know, violations uh, of human rights in Jammu and Kashmir. And that report was actually welcomed by the people which is now in power in, um, in uh, um, Jammu and Kashmir. So, yes, so, so you know, it's, it's a bit odd that uh, that same report now, a campaign based on that report, is now being seen as anti-Indian. No, but I don't know whether it was the report which was seen as anti-Indian or the actions or slogans which are supposed to have been raised there. Sir, so the slogans being raised. This has become a major issue. This, who decides? Yeah, when, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue. Yeah. 
no, the complaint actually says specifically that you know during the discussion there were speeches made which were anti-Indian. So right. apart apart from the slogans, there are several other allegations, and you know a lot of the ADVP protesters who are out on the streets today, this is what they're saying that you know how can you say anything against the Indian Army? So we've come to a point where even raising questions. Uh, which are even slightly critical, are uh, now being seen as seditious and anti-national. Okay, the report itself had had ha has made uh, you know charges about the Indian Army's role in in in, in violations of human rights. Sir, you think yes, that, that can? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'm getting with Justice Khan in on this. Uh, you you Justice Khan, you think that you know, this that can be seen as sedition? Oh, Girish, what is sedition? What is not sedition? Is a matter of investigation and trial. I mean, that we don't uh, give a judgment on... Criticizing uh, Indian Army, is it sedition? Criticizing Indian Army, if it leads to what? It has to, there are certain tests which must be satisfied. It must lead to that. It must lead to an actual, actual incitement. It must lead to an actual dissatisfaction, imminent dissatisfaction being created. And it must lead, for example, in Pakistan, they have a provision. If somebody criticizes the army there, that becomes sedition. Straight away, there is a law for that. But in our we case, we don't have that. We don't have a law like that. We are dependent on the interpretation of the, and the law, consequences law, of the law, law, law by the Supreme Court. Yes. No. For that, we have other laws. See, for example, for we have, we have so many laws which we can rely upon. We have Unlawful Activities Act. We have National Security Act. We have uh, in that uh, prevention, what is that, Public Safety Act. We have so many acts. We have, even in the Armed Forces Act, we have provisions where a thing like this can be dealt with. And those are very, very um, uh, serious uh, provisions of law which can be relied on. Now, this, this provision is from nowhere. This pro you see why this is being misused? Because this is the most ambiguous provision of law. And this is being and misused. And there has been no effort to end this ambiguity at all, all these years. And that is why there is, a there is a serious case for its review by the Supreme Court itself. Because you can't combine in a constitutional democracy. This is the Kedarnath case goes back about 50 years. And that 62. Been... That's in 62. And after that, we have been having so many cases. By and large, sticking to that position. But you know, the academic interpretations do not work out on the ground. And how does a policeman okay. know that raising a slogan is not sedition? <laughs> this. Mr. Marwa, you, you think that you know there is a oversensitivity to these kind of issues. Is it a is it a recent development or you think the police have always been over cautious and oversensitive to these kind of complaints or allegations? No, this is not a new issue. We've got so many holy cows in our country <laughs> that uh, it is not just shouting slogan of Azadi. So many other things uh, where the public opinion um, thinks that it's a terrible thing to happen. In that case, the police plays safe and registers the case, FIR. And as... Um, you, you, do you agree with Ashok Tandon that unless, that, that unless there is some political backing, the such kind of cases are not registered? No, no. Political... I don't say that uh, political... Uh, Interference is not there, uh, but to say that every case is under political um, approval is also not correct. And most of the time, the it is sedition, the, sedition the charge police is playing safe. Play safe. That is why we need to revisit uh, this uh, section uh, itself. Um, if we have to have this section, as I believe we should have, because uh, after all, sedition it can be. It's, serious um, uh, matter, a serious issue. But at the same time, it's misused. And in these cases, whether it's Kanaiya Kumar or whether it's Hardik Patel in, in, uh, in, in Ahmedabad yeah. or this one, I think this is a case of... that cartoonist, you know, who was Asim uh, Trivedi. Trivedi. This is a case of overkill. That's why we need to provide safeguards. Okay. Uh, Sanjay, safeguards. Today, I, 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 today <coughs> apparently... Uh, one of the organizations has gone to the Supreme Court actually talking about the safeguards uh, for this uh, for this kind of situation. You think that what kind of safeguards do you think can be can be built in? See, there's already a safeguard. What is no, the safeguard? No, no case can be brought before a court without the state government granting sanction. But you see, the sanction stage comes in much later. Right. There is always the investigation and then the process itself becomes the punishment. Exactly. And most importantly, what happens is the presence of this section provides teeth to what is otherwise a heckler's veto. 
A heckler's veto is that in a public meeting, if somebody says something, a heckler can stand up and say, no, this is wrong. They, that would be confined to that meeting. What happens is that then the heckler goes to the police station, says, I will set the law on you, and the whole process and the harassment starts. And, we, and, we, and, and part of the harassment, I frankly, is all the television talk shows, which then conflate the whole issue Absolutely. into a, a matter of national importance and national security. It is time that we decide to take ourselves a little less seriously. This republic is much stronger than a mere slogan. Than mere slogans getting, you know, posing a threat to the nation. Justice Khan, safeguards. What kind of, today I am told that common cause has gone to the Supreme Court. Some of the safeguards which they are talking about is that uh, compulsory, to make it compulsory for the concerned authority to produce a reasoned order before the, from the Director General of Police or the Commissioner of Police, as the case may be, certifying that the seditious act either led to the incitement of violence or had the tendency or the intention to create public disorder before any FIR is filed. That's asking for too much. Who does it? You think? Yeah. <laughs> who, who does it? When the police wala <laughs> registers a case and subjects you no, to No, because that, you agree that uh, FIR itself, the process itself becomes no, a no, serious no, no, harassment. Uh, Girish, no safeguards are going to work out in this interpretative uh, thing. The only safeguard is to do away with it. If you see the constitutional debates, you will find that K. M. Munshi put his foot down. He said, we can't include this word sedition in our constitution. We are a constitutional democracy now. We, are a, we have a rule of law. If I say this government is uh, bad or this government is incompetent or this government must be removed, am I committing sedition? And this is what it comes to. When it militates against Article 19, my fundamental right of freedom of speech and expression, then this article must go. This uh, provision must go. And Supreme Court, if you uh, go through that judgment in Kedarnath's case, they have gone by the federal government's, uh, federal court's judgment in Balinga Dardilak case. I mean, without... So we need it. With, See, okay, without, we, we agree that, you know, Justice, Mr. Marwa, <clears throat> Any safeguards you can think of, which which will not allow the police to play safe like this and just you know invoke all kinds of sections on the people. Well, one of the safeguards which is already there, which can be strengthened, is to before registration of the case. Okay, an FIR. Uh, before registration. Because once FIR is filed, then the process becomes punishment, as Sanjay Agde says. Uh, the, the permission of a senior. Uh, uh, police superintendent, police or something should be obtained. Um, I think uh, something like that must be done. Ashok? I, I agree with Ms. Marwa. See, as she, we have been talking is that the average policeman, he registers uh, the FAR and puts all the sections in it. But if 124 is, A is being uh, included, no. then at least he should consult his seniors, at least uh, an I IPS rank officer. So, okay. to, so that uh, at least there is some seriousness about it. Absolutely. At least that is to begin with. But as I said, this particular provision is all under, under scrutiny of the Law Commission. And we do hope that this 21st Law Commission will give a report on this and the government will act. Okay. Well, on that note, we'll end. But, you know, we will hope that the government will act. We will hope that authorities don't take this, uh, you know, thing so lightly and keep <clears throat> invoking this section so lightly. So lightly as we have seen in the last few years, we hope that the Law Commission will come out with its report soon and we hope the government will act and ensure that this, this provision of law which, is, which has clearly over, overplayed its use will no more be in the, in the statute books. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time. Tomorrow.